Section 6.3, exponential and logarithmic equations. So we're going to learn how to solve equations that involve expo exponentials and logs. So some tools that may be useful. Um, every equation is different, so we'll go through examples on when to use these. So one option is to rewrite in terms of exponential or log form. Um, we'll see that in the first example. Um, if the bases happen to match, we can use those one-to-one -one properties of b to the x or log base b of x. So what that tells me that is if 2 to the x equals 2 to the y, since those bases match, we can just say x equals y. Or same with logs. So log base 2 of x or log equals log base 2 of y, since those bases match, we can say x equals y. Um, if we have different bases, then we'll use different properties. Um, a common choice is to take the natural log of both sides. Um, so an example might be 3 to the x equals 2 to the y, right? Those are different bases. So we'll check all these out as we do examples. So example 1, let's solve 3 times log base 3 of x minus 1 equals 6. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to isolate the log. So we're going to divide by 3 to isolate the log. Get rid of that coefficient of 3. So we get log base 3 of x minus 1 equals 6 divided by 3, which is 2. And now that the log is isolated, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite in exponential form. That will help me get rid of the log. So we don't have matching bases because we don't have a log on both sides. So the trick here is to rewrite in exponential form. So 3 to the 2 power base to the other side equals x minus 1. So 9 equals x minus 1, and now we have a nice linear equation. Much easier to solve. And so I'll just add 1 to both sides. And so x is 10, and that's it. Should we try example two? So I notice I have exponentials on both sides, but the bases don't match. So two to the x equals four to the x plus one, right? Two is a base and four is a base. They're not quite the same base, but I think I can make the bases match. So 2 to the x I'm going to leave as is, and then we probably know that 4 is 2 squared, and then to the x plus 1. So we're almost ready to use that 1 to 1 property, but I'm going to simplify the right side a little. So 2 to the x, and then we learned we can multiply powers, so we get 2 to the 2x plus 2. I would say the most common mistake is probably not sharing the 2 with the 1. So it's 2 times that whole x plus 1. And now we can use the 1 to 1 property. And this property only works because the bases match. So 2 and 2 match. So that tells me that x equals 2x plus 2. So I'm going to go ahead and solve. It's nice and linear now, so we'll subtract 2x. 2x, so I get negative x equals 2, divide by negative 1, so x is negative 2. And you can always check your work. So 2 to the negative 2 for the left side would be 1 over 2 squared, or 1 fourth. And then 4 to the negative 2 plus 1 for the right side would be 4 to the negative 1 or 1 fourth. So they match. Let's try one more where the bases match. So example 3, we have 5x squared equals 625. They don't quite match, 
but I think 625 is 5 to some power. So I can make the bases match. So the, I'm going to leave it as 5 to the x squared. Um, what is 625? So we have 5 squared is 25, 5 cubed is 125, and it turns out that 5 to the fourth is 625. So I'm going to rewrite 625 as 5 to the fourth. And now that my base is matched, that makes the equation nice and easy. So we'll just say x squared equals 4. So that tells me x is 2 or negative 2. And we could check that, right? 5 to the x squared. 5 to the 2 squared means 5 to the 4th, which we said was 625. Same with negative 2. We still get 5 to the 4th, or 625.